welcome Professor Emirates and Dr. Varsha ma'am. Just like in any other multitasking woman, Dr. Varsha has excelled herself as professor. Is presently a founder chair in Indian Institute of Nutritional Science and consultant in Kanchi Kamakoti Child Trust Hospital, Chennai. Doctor was professor in Emba University, Sri Lanka, and as a visiting consultant in Fortier Lifeline Hospital, in K M Cherian Heart Foundation, in Madhuran Narayanan Center for Special Children, and in Kripa Rehabilitation Center for Challenged Adults, Sri Paramatu, and has a sport nutritionist in Fitness Academy, Y M C A, and has a committee member in Heens Nutrition Foundation, India. and has a, a panel member in who guidelines for nutritional practice in south east asia is a nutritional advisor in international vegetarian union indian vegetarian congress and indian society of Crit critical care medicine and doctor has a representative on pensa parental and enteral nutrition the society of asia Excelling in flying colors as a professionalist, Dr. Prestigely presented the country on International Confederation of Dietetic Association held in Chicago. Dr. is recipient of a few awards: Juliet Low World Friendship Award, Silac Scholarship for Renal Nutritionist, Srimati Malathi Endowment Award in recognition of valuable contribution to the field of nutrition in Women Doctors Association. Adding to the further feathers, Doctor is an editorial board member in the International Journal of Peritoneal Dialysis and also has inked the chapter Nutrition in Indian Academy of Pediatrics. Eat healthy to stay healthy is the mantra of the day, ma'am. We look forward that you will guide us in the right path to serve the society and nation in the better fashion, ma'am. I kindly request you to arise to the podium. pleasant afternoon um we we've, we've crossed the halfway mark for the day so i would say that we are beginning now uh, before the stomach starts crawling i will give you food for thought i would begin with this question where would you place yourself on the scale regarding your nutrition belief are you a radical person you're liberal middle of the road moderate or conservative you don't need to answer me but please answer yourself what sort of a person are you the, the reason i ask this question is because this will help you decide for yourself how easily you can be influenced when it comes to nutrition do you look at the headlines that come in the newspaper do you dig up on papers or snippets and or do you listen to what others tell you as far as nutrition is concerned i feel very sad i've been fighting for this that we are teaching physics chemistry biology everything to a the garden school student but we are not teaching the very basics of our existence and that is nutrition for the simple reason each one of us is what we eat you are what you eat if you keep this maxim in your mind you can never go wrong because if you are unhappy with your height if you are unhappy with your weight you have nobody to blame except yourself it is very easy for you to say oh my my grandparents my parents everybody is so heavy and so i am heavy don't try to escape on that sort of a thing because it's a very simple equation as i take you along uh, dr kannan said that you know i was poor in mathematics that's why i went into medicine no life itself has been mathematics we've been taught subjects as a, a not relating to our life and that is where the problem comes in even for nutrition people felt that you know you do, you're not good at maths then go into uh, nutrition so at every stage in nutrition i have to do calculations now when we look at nutrition as a nutritionist everybody keeps and if you remember that nutrients are nothing but chemical substances that the body obtains from food during digestion then there are only six categories of nutrients that you should be consuming the carbohydrates these are energy giving fats energy giving protein body building 
vitamins and minerals are called regulatory and hormone uh, protective ones and water without which none of us would have any of these things working inside us. Now if you look at the numeric 6, just make an inversion of that and that will become as nine food groups. But before I take you to food groups, you need to understand why we need to take proteins. We say that it is basic to life. The most abundant substance in a healthy, non-obese body is 20% of your body weight. You divide it into skeletal muscle, visceral muscles, I mean visceral protein and immunity protein. Now, when you take protein, are you feeding your skeletal muscles, I mean the skeletal protein compartment or are you feeding the visceral or are you feeding the immunity? There is no demarcation. That is what needs to be understood. But when I do an assessment, if I were to look at your skeletal protein status, I look at your height and weight. I also look at your skin bones, what is the condition of it, uh, your nails and that tells me only one compartment, the skeletal compartment. And then with respect with respect to visceral, we generally depend on our lab values to understand what is your status as far as the viscera is concerned. And then immunity, we know that it is your Army, Navy and Air Force. So how do you pick up? Now you will find that when I assess a child and versus an adult, the child is growing, dynamic. And so you will find that we are looking at height as a predominant way of understanding how they are managing the protein when it comes to the skeletal department. But when it comes to the weight part of it in the adult, they have already achieved the height. So you will find them that they are not going up vertical, but they go horizontal. Somewhere, you know, now we find that people are almost reaching maybe four feet in height and even four feet sideways. Okay, this is where the problem comes in and that is where you need to understand what Dr. Kannan was trying to tell you that fitness means that you know you don't continue to keep on growing on the wrong direction and this is what most of the people have as a problem now. If it comes to visceral protein basically we are looking at it in terms of do you have are you anemic uh, are, are you not capable of carrying enough of oxygen to all your tissues all this enzymes, hormones, etc. Now there is no single marker by which I can tell you your nutritional status is perfect. I need to do a series or a huge gamut of analysis, which is a very difficult thing. But now we are coming into a non-invasive way of looking at subjective global assessment and relating it to uh, the functionality of a person to understand what is their nutritional status. Very many times I tell the parents, you know, the height and weight would be going all right. They don't have any obvious problems with their visceral protein. But yes, immunity is compromised. Some child sneezes and your child catches cold. Somebody has cold and your child catches fever. Your immunity is compromised. And this is where we know that whatever is taken as protein, the consumption, there is some deficit which is affecting one particular compartment. So this is what we need to understand when we look at it in terms of what nutrition does to your body and this is how I analyze. I look at the skeletal protein, visceral protein and the immunity protein. With respect to carbohydrate, I again reiterate, there is a medical definition which says any of various neutral compounds of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen as they could be sugars, starches or celluloses, most of which are found in green plants and constitute a major class of animal foods. Now the role of carbohydrate is to provide energy. I call it the currency of the body. Our Prime Minister did, declared a demonetization and all of us were caught unawares, but none of us could go and get dollars or pounds and start using. We still needed rupees. All right. So the currency of your body is carbohydrate. And please understand, you cannot, which means you cannot have a carbohydrate free diet. Please understand that. The signs and symptoms that you're not consuming enough carbs include everything from lack of energy, that is fatigue, constipation, nutritional deficiency, nausea, headache, and bad breath. 
as dentist bad breath is something which you need to contend with you are peering into the mouths of all your patients just imagine having a stench coming out of them is not a pleasant thing which you want to work with so you need to understand if they have problems then it has to do something with their carbohydrate intake and now unfortunately everybody is going around saying i am on no carbs or low carbs please the message is that is the currency of your body and you cannot afford to have no or low carbs at all hypoglycemia we know is low blood sugars and this is lack of carbohydrates okay as far as healthy people are concerned i'm not talking about diabetics here i'm talking about healthy people there are people who are going into uh, low uh, i mean hypoglycemia because they are very anxious about consuming carbs at all ketosis occurs in absence of carbohydrates when glycogen glucose stores in the liver is depleted and unfortunately why am i bringing up these terms is because you would be coming across people who are now saying i am on keto diet heaven's sake now you should decide no keto diets no hypoglycemia is to be permitted in any person because that's the currency of our body period the second thing is with relation to fats you need to understand one thing human system is a fat producing system you may say i will not touch anything to do with fat no fried foods no adding ghee to my rice or to my chapati and you know try to do all these gimmicks i can assure you despite that if you are eating at the wrong time then you are going to be converting all that extra energy that you have not utilized into fats but there are certain things you need to understand as far as fats is concerned there is animal versus vegetable fat if you're taking more of non vegetarian and nowadays i find when i'm counseling parents they would have started off with you know the adults in the house want to eat only non veg at every meal and so the child develops a taste much before they learn to eat actual food have learned to eat non veg and so even yesterday i had a pediatrician bring his nephew to me who is in the us says even in school they are served frozen chicken and so he loves eating only non veg and hates eating any fruits or vegetables this is an acquired taste as doctor mentioned earlier if one or one and a half inch of your tongue if you're going to indulge in it you will find that you are very skewed in the way you're consuming and with more of non veg you're getting more of animal fat now below animal fat look at the word that i've entered it says saturated everybody is worried about this word saturated fat it comes from the animal animals as such while plant gives you unsaturated and there is a third word that i've used under it that is visible versus invisible many of us don't realize that we may stop ourselves from adding a, a, a teaspoon of ghee but you know we are eating invisible fat that comes to us from you know nowadays there is a hab, i mean you know fashion for people to say handful of almonds or oh, i eat only pistachios i only eat almonds i eat only cashew nuts because nuts are good okay all of these can give you a lot of invisible fat you add coconut to everything invisible fat all right so we might be cutting down on what we add directly i think you know when uh, a proponent of dean ornish goes around i think his name is dr charger he goes around everywhere says you know uh, fat free oil and that is water you, we can use all these terms because we have no nutrition legal cell uh, in the country nobody controls i always say dietitians are one step above the housemaids you know housemaids are unskilled unorganized laborers and we nutritionists and dietitians are skilled unorganized labor and so everybody impinges on wanting to talk on nutrition and so you especially have where you know uh, sinclair hm sinclair a leading uh, authority on uh, diet without tears said hypocrites uh, pythogrins including hypocrites use diet as the main line of therapy medicine arose from dietetics 
Hypocrites and pathogens used diet as the main line of therapy and drugs when diet failed. Unfortunately, our medical colleges teach you drugs as the main line of therapy and diet when drugs fail. So if you look at it from that point of view, you would find that when people have not understood nutrition, you can pick on to just one word, latch on to it and then instill fear in people. But we need saturated fat. We need monounsaturated fat and we need polyunsaturated fat. Now the question was, you know, Americans are the people, big bullies. You already know how Trump behaves with everybody, right? And they've been doing this not from the Trump time. They've been trumpeting even before that. And so the American Heart Association turned around and said, you, to them everything is large, larger, largest. So they said that, you know, Eskimos eat a lot of blubber. And yet they don't come to the cardiologist, all right? So they didn't, went and did a survey on it and they said, oh, eat more omega-3 fatty acids, eat more of sea, uh, seafoods, the, the blubber and, uh, of seals and whales and things like that. And nothing will happen to your heart. What they did not know is that brain is very silent, you see. They never realized the Eskimos always had to go to the neuro, uh, neurologist. Because, you know, their whole blood picture changed with that excess amount of uh, omega-3 and uh, um, um, polyunsaturated fatty acid that they were consuming, that, you know, they, were, they had a tendency to strokes and, and that sort of a thing. So then I always say, as a marketing thing, you need to come to me as a nutritionist because I can let you eat both and save both your heart and your brain. Okay, which is to say that you need not be fearing fat. Fat is essential because it gives you essential fatty acids A, D, E and K. And you need to consume it coming from the vegetarian source. And then only you will be finding, but you do need certain amount of it to come as saturated fat also. So the best oil that you have now, which gives you the WHO combination of 1 is to 1.5 is to 1. That is, saturated fat versus monounsaturated fats versus polyunsaturated fat, this is the ratio. And if there is only one oil which gives you this perfect ratio, it is a rice bran oil. All right? We do have research that has given us this oil. If not, there was wisdom in the way we ate. If we want gently oil, and what was that? That was supposed to be monounsaturated. Each area had had a particular oil. Kerala used a lot of coconut oil. And everybody has been crying foul on that. But believe me, coconut oil has its own great advantages. And it is how you consume it that makes a big difference. How you consume it, that is how you use it in your cooking, how, you, how much do you eat it. And so there are people who will tell me, yes, oh doctor, we eat avial every day. You know why? Because all the vegetables are included. But what they forget is that they add a lot of coconut and they insist on coconut milk and coconut oil and coconut only. That is where I would say that no, don't be fixated on avial only because you're using more vegetables, but you're also adding the other component on it. So every recipe, I think in India for every, uh, it is said that for every half a kilometer you travel, the dialect changes and so does the cuisine, which is what we need to understand. We have adapted so beautifully to our geographic environment and have accepted food on that basis. But we are trying to be scared about what people tell from outside. Krishna taught us to eat butter, but the rest of the world tells you don't touch butter, which is a very sad thing. But it depends on how much butter you add and how you eat it. So I want you to remember there is a demarcation for when it comes to your food fats, animal versus vegetable, we need to include vegetable oils, saturated versus unsaturated. Please remember unsaturated is both mono as well as poly and we can't afford to have excess amount of poly. You have to have this as a combination and there is something called visible and invisible fat. So be conscious about what goes inside you rather than saying I will take a fat free diet. It doesn't help. 
with comes to minerals there are 26 of them the macro calcium phosphorus magnesium sodium potassium chloride sulfur how do i define the macro then a 70 kg person requires it to be consumed at as in grams then it becomes macro when i need to consume it in milligrams or nanograms or micrograms it becomes micro iron zinc selenium copper manganese molybdenum cobalt iodine chromium fluoride now what i want you to emphasize is don't think that these 26 minerals can be consumed as a capsule there is a problem in this because just one example if i take zinc sulfate along with um, iron ferrous sulfate the both gets picked up by the tail the sulfate okay and the body just picks up the sulfate without realizing whether it picked up the zinc or the iron and so you can precipitate a deficiency on the basis of this combination that you have consumed but you know when they give it to you in a capsule form they are going to use ingredients that are very cheap for them so that they can make more profit so nobody wants to give you the, the real thing is iron consumed in an organic form as, as you know is uh, better absorbed than when it is in the inorganic form that is if it is ferrous sulfate you find that it is not that much uh, absorbed especially when you have a combination of zinc and um, with sulfate or iron with sulfate or even magnesium for that matter with sulfate so please understand minerals cannot be this can be toxicity there can be deficiency there can be antagonism all these things that can happen when you just take it in one capsule form and you can precipitate a problem if i say this for minerals look at the vitamins part of it fat soluble vitamins a d e and k if you take excess amount of it toxicity because it is stored in your liver i have had children at child's trust admitted in fact two children you know where the parents used to have cod liver oil capsules you know and the child found it very exciting to keep popping the, the those two children had just finished the whole bottle of cod liver oil came in with vitamin a toxicity just imagine how much they should have consumed to have had this problem so we never have a particular dosage for this and so it is dangerous for us to be isolating them and consuming them independent of the actual food on how it should be consumed with respect to the water soluble you have b complex which is thiamine riboflavin folacin niacin b6 b12 biotin pantothenic acid each one of them has a different role and a different function but unfortunately because we call it as b complex you have many com pharmaceutical things that are available as a b complex one itself and r imagine each one has a different role and a function along with vitamin C because they are water soluble if you will take in excess they are lost in the urine if at all the microbes in your toilet can bless you you know you can continue to consume a lot of water soluble vitamins otherwise they are of no use excess of them are just lost in the urine having given you this as far as you know a bird's eye view uh, for the lack of time because uh, madam had through Dr. Arti given me a list of all the questions she want to cover and I think what I did is three years course in nutrition I will have to cover it in matter of uh, just one hour that is assigned to me it will be impossible but I'm giving you a bird's eye view of telling you what is it that we need to look at when it comes to nutrients as such per se water is the last nutrient we need to avoid dehydration we can survive without food for weeks but cannot survive without water even several hours and yet with the toilets being so bad in the schools there are many children who refuse to use those uh, toilets and so the best thing they would do is not drink water most of the parents tell me that they come back home with a water bottle just intact because you know they think it is safer if i don't drink water i don't need to go to use the loo it's not only with children i find this even with adults and especially if we are sitting for long hours in an air conditioned environment we don't even realize that you know the sens the sensorium is changed we don't even realize we are thirsty and the chances of dehydration are much much higher so I think that it's not only the fish 
off the bay of bengal that is converted into kanjapona karavade i think people living on the coast are all within our we are all dried fish by ourselves this is where we need to worry about the dehydration that is setting in in most of us and when it comes to energy this is where the mathematics comes in as i said no energy this is physics physics chemistry is all taught as a subject in isolation we don't realize that all of this works within our body energy is neither created nor lost we were taught this and so we need to remember this when it comes to our body and what happens is that it is all stored as body fat and intake is more than uh, and the expenditure is more than the intake we gain uh, sorry if the expenditure is less than the intake we gain weight if the expenditure is less than the intake we lose weight and intake versus expenditure we have weight maintenance it's just a very simple equation if you going on putting on weight you know that whatever you may say i've cut down on food but i'm not losing weight is only because along with that your level of exercise or your expenditure is less and so you'll continue to do that now how do i interpret this when i see a patient i tell them that it's not just the weight you need to worry about you need to look at your body composition i will give you a very simple example take two new jute bags why new because they are not misshapen okay and then if you tell me that your weight is 60 kilos then i will tell them put 60 kilos of rice in one bag and put 60 kilos of feathers in the other and then have somebody go into the room and say pick up the bag and bring it out the tendency what the person would be to first approach the rice bag because it looks very compact and small and they will want to pick it up but they will find 60 kilos to be lifted and then you know they will i will tell them okay you attempted that you felt mentally you have made a note it looked small but it is heavy you looking at the feathers you will say already it looks heavy so same effort is put to lift up but it comes up very easily we need to change our body composition from looking like feathers to looking like rice bag this is how you need to interpret your weight you want your body composition to change not just your weight people are bloating up and looking huge this is where the term fitness comes into place you need to look more like a rice bag rather than the feathers this is what you need to understand when it comes to understanding your energy having said this on the nutrients i gave you a bird's eye view on the nutrients i now take you to the food because people don't look at nutrients when they eat they look at food when they eat So how do we define food anything solid or liquid when ingested nourishes the body at all stages of life in health and disease and so there are now several terminologies that have come into existence with food junk food fast food convenience food dietetic food ready to eat food processed food how does each one of these differ well as far as we are concerned forget what comes ahead the second part is what is important food whatever you are consuming it is is going to give you the chemicals that are required by the body and how you cause an imbalance in those chemicals is what you need to understand rather than defining them as junk or fast or whatever it is you consumed it it is going to give you a sum total of some chemicals in your body which could be under carbohydrate fat now two important ones are carbohydrate and fat alone minus protein is the one which will give you the wrong equation so once we understand this i divide i convert the 6 i just take the numeric 6 and turn it round it becomes 9 so i call it as nine food groups that you must be consuming whether you are a dentist whether you are a surgeon or an anesthetist whether you live in chennai whether you live in punjab or you live on in kolkata west bengal or whether you are in india or in america this is the common basic requirement of every human being and so i have converted the six nutrients that the human system requires into nine food groups now when we say well balanced diet it is a different array of nutrients that we are supposed to consume which means to say we have to consume variety of foods because there is no single food that will give you all nutrients 
if you understand that then a well balanced diet means a variety of food groups each day now which are the food groups i will summarize them for you cereals and millets is the first one now this is your major staple and your carbohydrate many people have a question for me oh i have become diabetic should i stop eating rice and start eating chapati then the people in the north who are eating chapati should they stop eating chapati and start eating rice or you mean to say that people who are eating chapatis or the wheat are not getting diabetes not true so you don't have to make a radical change in the cereal that you're consuming it makes no difference whether you eat rice or wheat or ragi or bajra or jowar and now that is the latest fashion everybody wants to move away from cereal and go into millets but how are you consuming the millets and i think the industry is making a biggest kill by saying take oats now please understand it can any one of you tell me if you're eating oats how are you eating it as a porridge and what goes into making your porridge because you fear milk you will not add you will do it with water because you are worried about your hypertension you will not add salt because you are worried about your sugar level you will not add sugar aren't you miserable eating that stuff just cooked in water and you just gulp it down what an unappetizing way of eating you uh, some of them tell me they make it a kanji because it is so miserable thing to be consumed first thing in the morning you rather drink off and then they'll tell you oh no problem i drink two of them two glasses three glasses i ask them how much of oats did you take in that i am much more interested not in the glasses because you know it is like this advertisement that you see behind the bus which says you get more cups of coffee with that milk obviously you have more decoction you'll get more cups of coffee it's not because of the milk You, it it doesn't tell you it gives you more cups of milk it tells you it gives you more cups of coffee very nice to play around with words but this is what you need to understand cereals and millets is your staple and with that you need to have pulses legumes or lentils it doesn't matter whether you eat green gram red gram black gram tur dal masoor dal chana chola rajma just imagine i think god has been very very kind to us indians he gives so much of variety in the in in the pulses legumes and lentils and so please for heaven's sake we need to do a perfect combination with cereals and pulses legumes and that is where we have wonderful cuisine look at our south indian cuisine idli dosa idiyappam uthappam upma pongal six days of your week if you take in every day one item it goes with sambar chutney when i talk to my patients i convert it the other way around i tell them sambar chutney totu grudu idli dosa idiyappam uthappam upma pongal then the next thing they tell me sambar every day i tell them even there you have changed in the name you call it katrika sambar vengaya sambar urulakalang sambar please please yourself mentally that you got a different thing to eat today but the combination is i say it is the trinity brahma vishnu mahesh if you are a hindu and father son holy ghost if you are a christian please decide and tell me which one you want to displease you want to displease the brahma or the vishnu or the mahesh or you want to displease the father son or the holy ghost you decide if you will say no 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 i am a religious person i don't want to displease any one of the trinity then for heaven's sake eat your idli with sambar chutney when i teach the child i tell them that the sambar chutney what is the it's a dose related phenomena all of you here are using anesthetic anesthetic shock yes or no you cannot be touching anybody's tooth without having given them a shock is that not a dose related phenomena can you pump in them with lots of anesthesia no you are giving a particular dose believe me it's the same way when it comes to nutrition it's a dose related phenomena you can only eat more of rice or wheat or ragi or bajra and you need to add little bit of dal but if i do it in the reverse where i say i tell a child the sambar is your pond you have two white swans the idli is floating in them and the swans peck, bend down and peck you know the fish which is where you pick up chutney so it's more of sambar chutney and less of idli believe me your breakfast would be a balanced one that will last you till your lunch time you will not be hungry you don't have to overeat but if i run a restaurant where all of you in the morning 
busy people have no time nobody to cook at home so you would stop at my you know dr varsha is running a diet restaurant and she will give us nutritious food okay i give you two idlis with sambar chutney you know the way it, i said about dose related then i dr varsha becomes greedy because you know i was told 150 registrants but if i see too many seats which are vacant right so then same way if i turn around and say that ah, same people are coming and i'm earning same amount of money i become greedy and i want to earn more you know what i do i will give you sambar in one small katori and a chutney even smaller katori and all of you absent minded professors believe me will remember to eat either sambar or chutney not sambar and chutney and the f- two days three days four days and somewhere while you are doing your work in the department you will feel that you are becoming hungry much more earlier so what will you do from the next next day onwards you will order two plates of something you will have one plate of idli and one plate of upma or pongal or dosa or something like that because you don't want to get hungry what have you done you have loaded yourself with more energy rather than the protein of fat now you understand where we are going wrong the very day is begin in a wrong way with the way we eat our breakfast breakfast eat like a king does not mean you eat more quantity you eat it in a proper way and that comes to you with a combination of a cereal and pulse legume and lentil the third thing is milk and milk products when we were all born we were only drank milk but i have moved it down the category for the simple reason it becomes a part of your meal it could be in the form of curds or it could be a paneer or it could be in any of other form so that is your third group cereals gave you carbohydrate pulses gave you protein milk and milk products gave you everything but in a lesser quantity in a lesser volume and then that covered your major part of your macronutrients then you come in it also gave you fat the saturated fat came to you from your milk and milk products now vegetables i said that they are the protective and regulatory food vegetables and fruits are the next two important group that is to be included i divide them for you to understand as five different categories of vegetables green leafy vegetables roots and tubers water based vegetables and others now here i generally say for an adult 100 grams of green leafy vegetable any form of kire many people tell me maybe eat it once or twice a day uh, in a week i'm saying every day even eaten as mint chutney or a coriander chutney 100 grams is not much it reduces and it becomes one tablespoon is it so impossible for us to consume one tablespoon people turn around and tell me ah we are not goats we are not cows to be eating greens directly excuse me we are born vegetarians our carbohydrate comes by process of photosynthesis of the plants they have chlorophyll we may wear a green sari but that doesn't give us chlorophyll our proteins are fixated the inorganic nitrogen is fixated and made organic for you as proteins only by leguminous plants so you have to be vegetarian your uh, mono and polyunsaturated fats comes only through plants plants don't give you saturated fat so if you are on that basis green leafy vegetables is an essentiality you eat 100 grams of that the roots again i say 100 grams what are they carrot beetroot radish onion turnips we don't get turnips but now i think the exotic market gives us turnips also how much of it 100 grams is it too much no one medium size carrot is 100 grams can you not eat that you can be a rabbit and chew it off period or you can put carrot in your sambar or you can put radish in your sambar and you would still get it tubers urlakalang sepakalang karnakalang i'm not saying don't eat it but don't make a chips out of it but this is where we say that tubers comes to you as a vegetable masala dosa has potato but believe me if you were to eat one masala dosa you will stop your stomach is full you will say i won't touch potato and eat plain dosa then as i told you you will add one more plate of upma pongal idli something so eat it like a vegetable how much 50 grams so i gave you 100 gram of green leafy vegetable 100 gram of roots 50 grams of tubers quarter kilo covered then comes the water based vegetables 
all the goats and squashes, especially the bottle goat, cucumber, tomato, these have got more water. So how much do you take? 200 grams. 200 grams? Ah, that's not much. You take one big tomato and one cucumber, your job is done for the day. But that makes it 450 grams. And the last one I say is others, peas, beans, ladies finger. Oh, you can't say that is gender bias. I must say okra. Okay, so I, if I say okra or obruji, you know, I have to be westerner. I, mean, I can't talk, otherwise I'm gender biased. So if I use any of those other vegetables, then that is how much? 75 grams. In a day you have eaten something raw, something cooked, something added to your meal, but half a kilo of vegetable. Most of the families buy half a kilo and eat it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Excuse me, where would you go when it comes to your vitamins and minerals? Your fiber, the soluble fiber, the insoluble fiber. Where is your protection? Where is your regulatory force? You don't need minerals if you take half a kilo of vegetable as an adult. But this is what we need to understand. Many times, you know, when I talk to the children, they know what father doesn't like, what mother doesn't like, what grandfather doesn't like, what grandmother doesn't like, but none of these four adults will know what the child likes. And very many times they cook only that vegetable which even the servant will accept because even the half a kilo that is cooked, there will be leftover given to the servant. So now the servants tell us, Amma, I don't want to eat my food. This is the state of affairs when it comes to our vegetables. And then the fruits, there are yellow and orange fruits, citrus fruits, other fruits, dry fruits. Yellow and orange, papaya. It grows into almost every home in the south, but they will not touch it. Because you know they will say, sudu. You know, abortion. So I ask the lady of the house, when is your husband and children getting pregnant? Why do you prevent a great source of vitamin A being discarded only because you got this idea that it is hot and it produces abortion. How much are you going to eat? The fruit requirement is hardly 50 to 100 grams. Definitely not enough of a papain to cause, even in a pregnant woman eating papaya cannot cause abortion. But the sad thing is, we have got these myths and misconceptions when it comes to something which is tropical. People are being now told, mango season just went, it is not totally out of the market. But there are people who are scared of eating mangoes. But was nature stupid? Was God foolish to give you mango in the summer season? In the tropics? He gave it to you because it's good for you. So why don't you enjoy? But don't sit with one whole current of uh, mangoes. Okay, I will say one fruit does not mean you sit with your huge watermelon or you sit with a whole big pineapple or a big huge uh, jackfruit and say, I will eat one fruit. No, it's only 100 grams of fruit that you need to consume. So yellow and orange gives you vitamin A. Citrus, oh my God, it's impossible for people to be made to take citrus fruits. You tell them take lime or satakudi or something, salipudiko. But the same thing is given to you as vitamin C. If, if the fruit gives you vitamin C, salipudiko. But for salipudikaritika, to get out of it, you take vitamin C as a tablet. Aren't you penny foolish, pound foolish? Why can't you take citrus fruit directly? And then the other fruits, what doesn't come under yellow and orange, you take it along uh, uh, and, and citrus comes under other category. But this is where I have a caution for you. If I take fresh grapes, Absolute fresh grapes, 100 grams, I get only about 35 calories from 100 grams. I convert them to raisins and then consume that 100 grams. Very easy to consume, right? But what will happen? 530 calories. So don't convert your other fruits as dry fruits and consume that instead of fresh fruits. That is my message for the fruits. Nuts and oil seeds. We've been constantly adding, you know, we add sesame, we add coconut, we add all, we add cashew nut, we add all these things. We always ate them as a part of our meal. It was more like a garnishing. And we generally even, even ICMR recommends, you know, that you can use this as a source of monounsaturated fat as well as a protein. And eaten with your, I will also give you a meal schedule to tell you where you can do what combination. You will find that fruit, carbohydrate from fruit with, with the combination of protein and fat coming from your nuts becomes a perfect snack. 
this we will come to it when i come to the how you distribute the food groups and then herbs condiments and spices we all know columbus set out to search for a new route to india because why we are the spice land and because you know with the vermin load that we have in the tropics we were protected we didn't have the diseases despite a huge vermin load because of herbs condiments and spices but then we have converted garlic into garlic pearls and as i said like cod liver even garlic pearls are consumed by abundance no all these things were to be consumed only pinch wise it was a part of your cooking where we use herbs condiments and spices they should not overtake the the, the you should not be overeating these things at all they are carmative they help in our digestion fats and oils yes just imagine everything we had a place for we said that yes you can eat butter but there was an occasion and the quantity of how we ate it yes we must use oil but you go to a five star hotel have you ever seen a chefing dish when it is open you will have oil at least quarter to half inch floating the vegetables are all hidden under the oil right if your plate and your hand requires soap for cleaning believe me you are overeating on oil if you have used it just for cooking you have no problems and you definitely need to do that garnishing to make food more palatable if i were to give you only bread without butter you will finish the whole loaf the moment i give you a pat of butter you will stop with two slices that is the importance of fats and oils that we add to our food and that is why for heaven's sake don't stop adding if you go to a you know nowadays you get a balanced meal only when you go for a wedding not the buffet style the typical ls apart okay everything is as i told you will be available on your ls apart and the next time don't stop the person from pouring ghee on your rice it will look like he's pouring lot from the top but it will only be 1 teaspoon he knows the knack of how to pour it but on a hot on a green banana leaf hot rice is put one teaspoon of yellow dal and one teaspoon of ghee the way he pours it this is your world's best appetizer the white of rice the transparent aroma of ghee along with one yellow teaspoon of dal the world's best appetizer to make you have carbohydrate protein fat unfortunately the western world tells you please drink one big bowl of soup whom are you cheating the hotel benefits because you are not hungry after bread to eat anything at all don't cheat yourself that way one one teaspoon of this is your appetizer then look at it in terms of your sambar i as a as a north indian as a gujarati when i i didn't get to eat ls sapat unless i was invited somewhere and it used to be celebration time for us because you know that's when we got to eat everything but what used to shock us is the way they pushed rice on your thing i'll say mom they're putting a mountain of rice but as i grew up i realized that in the mountain of rice you just make a small valley and he puts only that much sambar you mix only that much rice as for the sambar not that much of sambar as per the rice have you not made a dose related phenomena in that you eat that sambar rice okay and then the next thing is you know the rasam the rasam brings out the kshatriya the warrior in you because if you didn't eat fast it will run out of your leaf so what do you do you do on the spot jogging of eating fast right your metabolism is increased because you're eating fast you know your concentration is to prevent it from running out of your leaf right and then for all that hard work on spot jogging you did the next thing that you are given is curd rice cooling your system in between you snatched at one puriyal that was made from roots and tubers the other puriyal that was made from other vegetables there was one appalam there was one payasam there was one vade believe me beautiful system of eating what do we do now we carry sambar sadam and buy the chips we we carry, carry curd rice and by the pickle what are we doing filling the stomach starving the body and so here i'm repeating even when it comes to fats and oils please judiciously include them in your diet and then when it comes to the ninth food group this is where the caution comes in look at the alphabets a b c d e f g h i i comes at the ninth level 
I make myself or break myself when I depend only on the ninth group. And that is what most of us are doing now. We have processed foods, we have seafoods, we have poultry, we have meat, which has greater emphasis and to the exclusion of the other eight groups. This is where we go wrong. If we are going to emphasize only on processed meat, processed foods, how, where are we going? Again, we are filling the stomach and starving the body. Having said that, I want to just summarize and tell you, diet is a more favorable means of obtaining required nutrients and in amounts the body needs rather than resort to supplements. So a diet is not helpful if it is both high as well as low in nutrients. Both deficiency and excess comes under the word malnutrition. It's all or none law. You cannot have carbohydrate for breakfast, fat for lunch, protein for dinner. All of us have belly button. But you can't use it like, you know, for the blenderizer. You can't press the switch here and expect everything to become one. No. Every meal has to have a balanced diet, which means it consists of the proper array of food groups, the nutrients and the mealtime schedule. Having told about the mealtime schedule, the next thing we need to look at, what is the meal schedule? There was a question when doctor was speaking, you know, um, that madam was asking me and she said, but you know, you people ask us to take frequent small meals and he's talking about three meals. Now I will tell you the emphasis on what exactly the meal schedule does. It is a health sustaining equidistribution of nutrients which steadily maintains your body's internal environment and it prevents in between, it curtails in between snacking. How do we come to this combination of a meal schedule and the composition is on the basis of age, gender, physical activity, economic status and physiological status of an individual. This is the universal meal time schedule. Wherever you are, and we have got a circadian rhythm, the rhythm of the sun. A biological clock sitting in the brain cannot be pulled out, cannot be pulled out to, you know, wind up. So how do we do it? We do it by eating. We tell our circadian rhythm, we tell our hormones and enzymes here. This is what I give you, start working on this basis. So we generally say that bedtime morning, that is along with the sunrise, you get up at six in the morning. What you need to give is a activator beverage. What is activator beverage? Nothing, milk. Okay? You may add tea or coffee to taste, but when I ask people what do you have first thing in the morning, they will only talk of tea or coffee, and the worst thing is now people talk about black tea, black coffee. For heaven's sake, what are you trying to do? You're only stimulating your system. You're not feeding it nutritionally. If your mother were to change and start giving you black tea, black coffee, I'm willing to change the milk even the first thing in the morning. Activated beverage means just plain milk. What is the dose related phenomena for that? 200 ml. That is why every South Indian home has a coffee dabra. Yes or no? Our ancestors were brilliant people. They knew what sort of dosage we were supposed to consume. 200 ml of tumbler with the 200. Now you know for making small coffee, 5 rupees, they will give you a small cup. And so you can drink it at any time you want. Wrong. You're drinking milk first thing in the morning, activate a beverage, followed by you need a minimum of two hours gap between your having got up, activated your system and eating your breakfast. I find the mothers, the parents will wake up the child at 7.45 because the bus comes at 8 o'clock. You know, the child is out of the way and no problem, let the child sleep. So they wake up the child at 7.45. Mother does the brushing, father pours the water, giving the bath. Mother puts on the shirt, the mother, father puts on the skirt or the sh shorts, depending on which gender it is. The mother puts the socks, the father puts the shoes. Mother pushes the milk, the father pushes the idli from the other side. 15 minutes, bundled, put in the bus. Ha! Marathon over for the day. And then what do they do? They pack something and give it and expect the teacher to monitor and see if the child eats a lunch or not. This is the state of affairs. And this is where we are going wrong in what we are doing. And if the foundation is weak, believe me, I will give you a piece of paper, give you a pin and ask you to make, I mean, make a pin prick, give it to you and say, please search for the hole. You will be exasperated with me the first time. But I tell you to put that pin prick every day of your life. In the next few days, you will find you have no paper. You have only one big hole. And that is what we are doing. That is where the disease sets in. This is where we have problem. 
because constantly we are assaulting our systems with food at the wrong time and the wrong combination of food so when we say that in the next two hours the you will be and tottila vanda palakam surkaad varikam po if you have a wrong habit now believe me that's where you started and you're a walking encyclopedia of all wrong systems inside you so if you have to make a correction you need breakfast after 2 hours which is an energizer meal and please do not skip breakfast mid morning i call it the elixir beverage what is elixir of life only water that is all you need to consume definitely not tea or coffee my father was you know in in central government service and he was a union leader and i know that how much of hard work he did fighting for the employees to see that they were given cup of tea or coffee free at at the office i said dad once i became a nutritionist i said dad you should have fought for in tamil nadu at least for coconut water why did you fight for tea or coffee because now coconuts have become much more expensive government would have granted it at that time you know all of you would have continued drinking coconut water now you know that is all you require a lemon barley or a tomato juice or a mixed vegetable juice or a coconut water is all you require to drink at 10 in the morning because what you're hydrating yourself along with micronutrients that go with it lunch 12 noon why because the sun is right above your head at 12 noon can you do something about this uh, back noise that i keep getting or am i doing something wrong okay so 12 noon is when we say and it's a sustainer meal this is when you need to have a balanced meal it sustains you for the next 24 hours on the basis of what you would eat at that time why 12 noon the sun is right above your head you can eat stones you will digest it believe me you'll have no problem with digestion if you eat at this time i give an upper limit to 1 o'clock and anywhere where i give this lecture whether it is rotary or lions club or anywhere i tell people why don't we as a population as a human population why is it that we all can't collectively take a decision that whether you are a client or whether you are a customer or whether you are the service provider we all will sit and eat within this time you go to the bank those people say they eat at 3 o'clock 4 o'clock to whose benefit you all of us are working even if you are looking at patients you are eating late the patient is eating late the doctor is eating late why why can't we collectively take a decision to eat much earlier and 12 is what i say the upper limit is 1 o'clock oh, that is fallen off okay yeah thank you so if you will eat a sustainer meal which is balanced as i told you you will have no problem you will be able to digest it and you will not have a tummy that goes 2 feet ahead of you i can guarantee you on that mid noon 2 o'clock is a rejuvenator beverage anything that you drank at at uh, 10 o'clock what you didn't uh, consume suppose you had lemon barley at 10 you can drink coconut water at 2 that that is just rejuvenating your system that is hydrating your system 4 o'clock generally we say it is tea time but i generally call it as a supporter meal time this is where you know you need a combination of a beverage which could be your milk with tea or coffee to taste or you can add the fruit and make it a milkshake if you like or take the milk and eat the fruit along with just your fistful your handful not a, not anything more than that i would say eat your nuts at this time you can eat it as sprouts you can eat your sundal at this time you know why because that's a time when you can relax and chew morning idli you swallow it afternoon rice you swallow it where is the work for your teeth your teeth have become somberi okay but please understand that chewing is what gives you both your jaw as well as your temple gets tightened with the chewing people who do chewing gum would know what difference it makes and i know that now you know even you dentists are talking about the one with xylitol or something for them to do chewing i would still say you rather eat your sundal which is nutritious and do some chewing 
that is much better it's a supporter meal because the fruit will give you the carbohydrate the sundal or the sprouts will give you your protein and fat it's a mini meal and i call it a supporter meal dinner by 7 pm why the sun sets by 6 o'clock so by 8 o'clock is an upper limit by which you should be eating if you're practicing wherever you are please make arrangement to give yourself none of us are maybe when you're on holiday when you're at home you can have an elaborate extended meal talking to family but when you're at work you might have to grab a bite in 10 minutes but please grab it in time so that the body continues to do what it has to do and you have to eat because you cannot be without eating the dinner is between seven and eight i call it a revitalize a meal please go through any dictionary in the world can anybody find out and tell me what is the definition of the word tiffin? Very typical of only our state. If they eat idli in the morning, it is told, Kalamara enna saftinga idli, night enna saftinga tiffin. And what is tiffin? Idli. But why is it called it tiffin? I don't know. There is no explanation for it, but that's the word that is used. I don't care whether you want to call it tiffin or you want to call whatever name. To me, the combination is either you eat as in breakfast. If you're going to eat the, the items like idli, dosa, idiyapa, mutapa, mupma, pongal, whatever it is, same, please, combination, sambar chutney. If you're going to eat the meal, then it has to be the rice with dal, whether you call it sambar, you call it kute, you call it verum parpe, and you eat it with only curds or you call it pachadi or raita and the vegetable. Please, this is the combination. I don't care whether you call it tiffin or you call it whatever, but this is what you eat. And if you're replacing your rice with chapati, please don't put salt in the chapati mao itself, okay, and then eat it with takali toku. Or they will, people will tell me kurma. Kurma will have very few vegetables, more of the gravy part of it. And those who eat non-veg will tell me that the non-veg was made on Sunday afternoon. The more kolumbu became a mean kolumbu. Mean was over at lunchtime. And then the kolumbu part of it was made in bulk. And that was eaten at night with chapati and next day morning with idli. And then people tell me how delicious it is. Doctor, you don't know you're missing something in life. I'm not a graveyard and I don't need to eat only gravies. I don't need to fill my stomach with what only my one and a half inch of my tongue. Where is the balance in what you have eaten? If you have to eat your non-veg, eat it as such per se, as a piece. You want to make it a colombo, fine. It has to have your dal. It is not a substitute, it is a bonus that you are eating. So please do not imbalance your dinners. This is the one which revitalizes you. When you sleep, it is like you have parked your car in the garage and it is being repaired. So please do not do shortcuts, do not eat late. Most of the people get heart attacks only when they eat late and whatever they have eaten sits in the stomach. Please remember your physiology. When you are eating, the blood, heart push all the blood to your stomach and when you sleep, it is to your skin. Skin is a bigger organ than your stomach, it overrides your stomach. So even after eating, if you go to sleep, the food is left undigested, the skin overtakes and that is why it produces a conflict in your heart. Most of the heart attacks are at night because of this conflict. If you want to avoid it, you must eat your dinner early by about 7, the upper limit is 8 o'clock. Bedtime night, relax a beverage. I learned this from the villages. I used to work in Somunglam group of villages and the old ladies that the grandmas taught me. And I was quite amused, you know, the story that they had behind it. And I, all of you are adults, so I can share it with you. They said that, you know, when a girl gets married and goes into her new home, the grandmother will call her aside. This was a part of the sex education. And she said, more kalindite, mamna or mamiya re pasanga laka kudikavichida, nalla gora tunguanga apuna ke vekka mirkade. I hope you understand what they wanted to connect on the whole thing. I used that theory and said, oh wow, if it can make the mamna or mamiya and the children go to sleep, okay, then I think I should use it medicinally. And how do they ask you to take this buttermilk? They say that you must add a paste that is made of 
ginger, green chili, cumin seed, asafoetida, curry and coriander leaves. Already Avin and uh, Amul and all of them have started giving you the masala buttermilk, isn't it? This is the theory of the old grandmothers and I have put it to use because this works as medicine on three counts. You have converted the lactose to lactic acid and having converted that it works as a muscle relaxant, a sleep inducer and because you have added the ginger etc it's a digestive. Children no colic pain and adults are able to sleep without burping and farting. There is science behind every food combination that is available in our world but the sad thing is we have given up on eating a very balanced way. I think we are already at 110. I can go on and on and on but I have covered for you the basics in terms of nutrients, the food groups and the meal schedule. These three things are very very important for us to have what is known as balanced nutrition. Each one of you is a nutritionist, each one of you is a dietitian, provided you understand these three basic principles and eat in a balanced way. If you do this, you can be, you are what you eat. Thank you. Madam, it's a very interesting lecture. We enjoyed it very much. The thing is, uh, why you didn't sp uh, spoke about the daily uh, requirement of calories, what is the food in, in, for in terms of uh, uh, this much of uh, morning can have a, in the form of uh, So that is very individual and very specific. We do this calculations. There is a Harris magnetic equation. We have several equations which we take into consideration to do the calculation. If I were to generalize and tell you, you need to eat 1200 calories, 1400 calories, it will make no, no uh, impact on you. I generally do a 24 hour recall uh, when I talk to my patient. It takes me about 90 minutes to counsel a person because I take down the history of what is your usual pattern of eating. I make an assessment of what status you are and what is the goal. I want you to make lose weight and with what period of time and then what you're eating on basis of which I make an adjustment. More often than not, I, I'm getting people to eat more than what they have been used to eating. It's because they're eating at the wrong time, the wrong combination. And so when I tell them, but what surprises them is that when they eat in the proper way, they actually lose weight rather than gaining weight. So let's not go by numbers of whether it should be 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. For the simple reason, FAO tells me that there is 5,000 varieties of rice. Now please tell me which composition should I use and how will I decide what that rice, which rice you are eating and what, what it gives to you. You understand? There are ways in which people are cooking the wrong way. Some people are talking about rice, vadi kitti tida saptuvaan, satupona sora saptringa. I need to understand how you are eating the rice, what you are eating it. Many people will eat rice as mixed rice, only as tamarind rice, coconut rice, ta uh, you know lime rice. Which means where is the protein? So you need to understand, I need to look at your meal composition, how you are eating it and only then give you a prescription. So I don't go by numbers. And that is the reason why ICMR has already worked out and said, if you are a sedentary worker, if you are a uh, you know, moderate worker, a heavy worker, this much of calories for men, this many calories for women. But how do you convert it into practice? Right? So what I have given you is a practical approach and I use only the coffee dabra, the, the tumbler and the thing to tell you how much. If I ask you how much you are eating, I know where I need to cut down. Given a list of time. Pardon? Oh, you are given a list of time, the starting from 6 a.m. Yeah. Time. Uh, practically speaking, we are taking three meals. Yes, I have also given three meals only. Basically, I have given three meals. If you will analyze... Times only concept. The meals is take. three. I have alternated it with the beverage. I have given it a different name so that if I say first thing in the morning, activate a beverage, you know, 
That's what I said. Tottila vandha palakam surkaad varikam po. So if I tell the child and you have got used to drinking the milk first thing in the morning, you may corrupt it and call it tea or coffee as added to it. It doesn't matter to me. But your system will demand and you will get used to drinking it that way. I have given the first thing is a beverage. The followed by breakfast which is solid. Then I have given mid-morning which is liquid. Then I have said lunch which is solid. Mid-noon is liquid. Tea time is solid. Dinner is solid but bedtime night is liquid. So I have just alternated it on that basis. And tea time though I call it solid, it is a combination which is very light. But we have high tea where we will have puff and samosa and a huge pastry piece to eat. And there are people who eat the lunch. Lunch madhyanam saap modi le. Annale wheat ka vandhi lunch saap wrong. That is at what? Tea time. So this is where we go wrong. Not for argument's sake, I just wanted to uh, just remember, I mean, tell that proverb, Pasi to Pussy. And even in Tirukural ter- also, there is a poem for that. If Pasi to Pussy, you don't have to eat anything. But in the schedule, we can eat it. If we eat it, we can eat it. We can eat it. We can eat it. Pasi to Pussy, just I'm telling you that. No, no, no. Pasi to Pussy, if, if it is a, I, I told you it's a dose-related phenomenon. Your breakfast is only two idlis with sambar chutney. If you have reduced, I mean limited to that, you should be hungry by lunch time. You understand? Yes. If you have eaten lunch properly, you should be hungry by tea time. And you are just supporting. I use the word according to that. I call the tea time as a supporter meal. And what did I give you as a composition there? I just said that you will eat a fruit and just handful of nuts. I have not told you to eat much more than that. Yeah, yeah. it's very meticulous. Very I meticulous. have given yes. you the composition for each time. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, what you said is. Uh, but you know, you know what will happen. People will consume the nuts because as snacks along with their alcohol, and nobody <laughs> takes that into uh, account. All those food ingredients not been included. That. <laughs> Pardon? All those food ingredients have not been included. I have not included because of the want of time. I can go on and give you, I mentioned the word convenience, foods ready to eat, everything. <laughs> right, thank you, thank you.